Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a watch me work. I feel like I haven't done one of these in a while. So I'm starting out removing the gel polish with, with a large cone carbide bit in a medium grit. This bit as well as the two others that I am going to use are all from AR Nail Supply. That's generally where I get all of my bits. I really am just removing the gel polish here. I'm not going any further than that. I'm not going onto the natural nail plate with this drill bit. It's fairly aggressive when it's brand new. This one does need replaced, so it doesn't really have a whole lot of grit left to it. I would call it a fine grit now, more so than a medium. So I'm just removing the polish and having a little chat with my client. I am using the Valentino to remove the dust, I would give this a probably five out of 10 at best, maybe, maybe a six out of 10 as far as removing the dust, but it does do, it does do the job and it does it okay. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it does do the job. So for the most part, throughout this tutorial, I am mainly only giving you work on one hand, just so you don't get bored watching both. I am here using the Carbide Safety Barrel from AR in the medium grit again. I'm coming in and removing the rest of the gel polish that didn't get taken off with the other drill bit, and I am bringing down her length with this one. Sometimes I also come up in underneath to take any tears that will hang out underneath the nail. This one is really great for removing excess gel polish that you couldn't get with the more aggressive bit. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't damage. Of course, you still have to be trained on how to use them and use them properly, but this bit is excellent for coming in around on the nail plate a little bit just to remove any little tiny bit of lifting that might have come during the three weeks or four or however long your client goes. The electric file that I'm using here is also from AR Nail Supply and it is the Erica's Journey 30K. I love this e-file. It is battery operated, it plugs into charge. I am running it on 30K through the first and second bit here. When I get to, <laughs> that beep was me turning it on, playing with the, uh, the button. The next bit that I use is going to be the skiver, the cuticle skiver safety bit. It runs, I run it between 18 and 20K. So I do turn it down a little bit for the cuticle work, which is what you see me doing here. I love this bit. This bit really helps with any kind of lifting as far, not as far as taking it off, but as far as preventing it on the flip side of the fill.
using a premium zebra file. I buy them in a 50 pack, also from AR Nail Supply. These are from the brand Ugly Duckling and I get them in a medium grit. I really have fallen in love with the shape and size and grit of these files and I can't seem to replace them with anything else. I've tried. These are really quite expensive files and I have tried to replace them. I have tried other files. I just don't like them. And I would prefer to pay more and have great tools than pay less. So here we are. So I just come in and I make sure that I like the shape and that everything's looking good there. This of course gets down into the sidewalls better than the drill bits do. I do like to hand file still. I am old school and probably won't ever change that. I don't do a lot of hand filing though. I'm not using a lot of pressure here. I'm not actually taking down any of the product here either. I am really just roughing up that product uh, to have the new lay of acrylic set on properly. And I'm prepping around the cuticle and around the line where the acrylic ends and the nail begins. I don't want there to be any kind of bump there or any kind of line of demarcation there without, of course, filing on the natural nail too much. As always, sanitation is huge right here for a couple of different reasons, mostly because, well, it's sanitation, but secondly, because this is what's going to keep the nail or part of the process of what's going to keep the nail from lifting. This is another part of the process. This is Young Nails Protein Bond, and I swear, buy this stuff. I love it so much and if I can help it I will never be without. Now I'm coming in with my Ugly Duckling Premium Acrylic Powder in pink as well as the Premium Acrylic Liquid. I'm using my Glitter Bells number 10 brush. I love this brush. It is my favorite. It rained today and was really damp where we are, so I'm kind of coming in a little bit slow with this for speed because I want to know how it's going to act today, what kind of temperament it's going to have. Because rest assured, here on the East Coast, when our humidity goes up and down, the acrylic has moods that follow. 
I am simply using some blue shop towel that I cut in half. I cut kind of like a roll or a half a roll at a time. It takes forever to get through it. And that's what I'm using to wipe my brush on. I feel like it's the only thing that I've come across that's really truly lint free. And for cost per client or cost per service, it just makes sense for me to use this. So I'm coming in with my beads. I'm making sure they're perfect before they lay them down. And guys, this is 20 years worth of practice. Don't think that coming in and laying down a bead and making it kind of so simple, you don't get this off the bat. This, this really isn't how it looks off the bat. But work hard and practice and work until you can get to this place. When I'm giving advice to girls that are new in the industry, one thing I always try to tell them is to lay down your acrylic in a manner that you don't want to file. So think about it as you want to do the least amount of filing as possible at the end you're finished filing. And not to say that you should never finish file, I think everyone should finish file. That's a whole other conversation for a later date. But when you're laying down the acrylic, just keep in your mind that you wanna lay it down properly, you wanna lay it down efficiently enough that you don't have to file and file and file afterwards. So I'm coming back in with that same file and you'll see what I mean by the amount of finished filing that I do. I am doing the edges, of course, because sometimes they get sharp after you've laid down the acrylic. I am now buffing through. I'm not putting a lot of pressure at all because we don't need it. Obviously we've stopped and, and talked here. <laughs> This is, you know, it happens. This is something that I tell people to do if they're trying to up their time a little bit, if they think they're taking too much time, is to film themselves. Just loosely, it doesn't have to be overhead filming, but just film yourself and see how often you stop. Because for some people, every time they talk, they stop. I try not to, I was like peering over my camera at my client because my camera was at like eye level, but Stopping and talking is something that can really take up a lot more time than what you think. So if you feel like you're being slow, maybe think about that. How much are you stopping? How much are you talking? These dust brushes I love so much and I didn't really put like a slow picture in there, but I can try to screen grab something from the Air Nails Supply website as also where I've gotten those. I love them. They are amazing. They wash so well. They are durable. They always look the same. Like the ones I have look exactly the same as they did when I first got them. I love them.
let's get into the fun part. So I have used the dust brush and taken the dust off the nail. I have also cleansed with a 99% alcohol and a lint-free wipe. I am just cleaning off my gel polish brush here a little bit. I always come into the new color, swirl it around a little bit on the paper towel and then wipe it because one thing that will push out old color from your brush is new color. So you can kind of see that I had black on my brush before I had the color Oatmeal, which is what I'm using from Glitterbells. It's a Glitterbells Unbelievable Gel in Oatmeal. Uh, discount KO code is down below from the nail throne. So we're putting Oatmeal on this hand, but that's how I have cleaned that brush. And I would love to tell you where I got this brush. I would love to tell you what number it is, what size it is. I really wanna tell you how great it is, but I have no idea where I've gotten it. There, I'm holding it in my hand right now. There's absolutely no writing left on it. And if I'm not mistaken, I feel like I got it on clearance. But the Nail Throne has Glitter Bells gel polish brushes that are amazing. So you can go check those out if you would like. So the lighter color that I'm going into that I'm using right now, like I said before, is oatmeal. The other one that I'm going to go into for the other hand is Feeling Myself, and that is from Glitter Bells as well, which I purchased from The Nail Throne. Now these products have the top coat in them. They cure to a tack free. I love them so much, like I can't tell you how much I love them. The coverage is amazing. They cure amazingly. They're just such a clean gel polish and they're in a pot and I really love that because it means you can get every last bit out of them. Whereas with a polished bottle, I find you're just missing so much product often. So I've kind of taken the curing time out of the video, but I'm curing each hand for 60 seconds, I believe. 30 is what the manufacturer uh, requires. However, my lamps do 60 and I really just love to have them in there for 60 seconds. I'm finishing up with this hand. I am going to add a picture of the design right now and a shout out to the original artist, I believe there is an artist tagged on the picture. And we basically did kind of exactly the design. Um, I mean, not so much exactly the base color, but we did essentially exactly the design. The client sent it to me this morning. Okay, so we have done a second coat. I didn't put that in the video. I didn't want to bore you too much. I am using the Get Buffed Pro brush in mini. Oh my goodness, these are amazing brushes. If you don't already have them, they are shipping, I believe, still out of Australia. They are worth the wait. They are worth getting. I've had them for ages and I love them so much. I'm also drawing with my black, just plain black, unbelievable gel. I haven't made these matte. Normally, if I'm going to put on nail art, I will make the nail matte first because it's easier to draw. But with this type of like zebra slash giraffe print, it just didn't seem like it needed to be that way. Uh, I guess it's not really giraffe print, more like leopard, but anyhow, it didn't need to be, when you're using unbelievable on unbelievable, it, it just didn't need to be that way. Moving on to the other hand, I'm doing much the same. We're just kind of squiggling on a little bit of like a leopard print. These were fun for fall. She had some really bright designs the last two times, if not more, if not the last like half a dozen times throughout the summer. So we decided that it would be fun to kind of just tone it down a little bit. I do come in with my e-nail couture dotting tool and I just decide that's the best way to get the product on the nail. All we're trying to do is make a little blob that's kind of not symmetrical. So I am going back and forth here with my design. I am putting it in the lamp while I'm working on the other hand. So although this polish is not prone to running, 
I am prone to hitting it and clients are prone to hitting it. It just makes more sense to just throw it in the light, do one hand and then the other back and forth, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's, it's done, it's flash cured at least, if not mostly fully cured by the time you get back to it. And it just is really gonna make your life a lot easier. Finishing up this design with the Luminary Nail Systems Matte Top Coat. It's called Empower. It is a tack free matte top coat. I love it very much. It's become a staple for me, and I just buy the refill bottles and refill my little bottle. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little work with me. And if you have any questions, pop them down below if there's anything that I haven't listed on the video, and I will get that information to you. 
please enjoy the end pictures. I really liked doing this set, it was fun. It seemed like we like blew through it. In the end, I believe it took like an hour and like seven minutes, it was about what the video was. So that gives you an idea. Again, I've been doing this for a really long time, so if it takes you a lot longer than an hour and seven minutes, believe me, there was a time it took me a lot longer than an hour and seven minutes. Thank you.